So we're gonna leave doubles for a while and we're going to go back to some more adding strategies and specifically we're gonna learn to count on. Here's the cool thing about the setup of the next few days. When we learn to count on, first of all, it's more efficient than if we need to count all, right? Um, but also it's gonna help us with missing add end problems or we sometimes call it change unknown or I think here in this lesson it's called a mystery change but that counting on helps us because I can solve this problem by counting on my fingers four five six seven right and getting my answer by what I count on with and so these problems have been a challenge for our kids in CGI and we want to be able to tackle them but doing it in this context of counting on and making sure everybody really has that strategy is going to be great. So we do some counting on, we do some story problems, and then we do some counting on. That's like the scope of the unit over the next few days. Um, so uh, just having that in mind. When I say press and count on, by the way, let me just make sure we know. If I'm doing four plus three, the press and count on would be taking one hand and like pounding my other hand into it. Here's my other hand. I pound like this, four, and then I count up on my fingers, five, six, seven. Now this is gonna be a little bit tricky for kids. This is what our first graders need to do. After they pound, they count up. For our kindergartners, just knowing that there should be three fingers up is really a hard thing. And so you spend a lot of time saying like, how many fingers do I put up? Three, okay, now let's press and count. Four, because that's not a finger, right? That's not getting added. Five, six, seven. Anyway, so that's where we're headed. That's the vision. That's going to help us with these. That's going to help our kids be faster in general. It starts to lead to invented algorithms, right? Like if I'm trying to add 4 and 39 one day, if I know to count up, I might start adding stuff like that, right? Because I kind of have this like start with 4 and add on thing in my brain. So there's a lot going on here that we want to eventually get to. I know that, I, I don't mean to overwhelm you. This lesson is very straightforward. It's easier even than the doubles lessons we've been doing. And um, it goes very much into the like, I do, you do, we do. Like it's back to like, let's do some work on the carpet. All right, great, let's keep talking together and now go back to your seats. So that part should be nice and easy. All right, the class is, every day is gonna start with a story problem. So just let them do this problem. You know, if the pattern continues, how many cans, I'll let you solve this out. I'm going to tell you a story and I want you to draw a picture to match it. Use circles so that doesn't take too long. And this is where kids are working on their whiteboards and you're basically like telling them a story. In the kindergarten classroom, some students are sitting down and learning. Like, okay, well, read the whole story. Some students are standing up and learning how many students are there and all. And then go back and really make sure that after each sentence you stop and draw, right? So some students are sitting down and learning. Stop and draw. They should draw, right? Some students are standing up and learning. Oh, I'm sorry, five were sitting down and learning. Some students are standing up and learning. How many students are off? What do we do here? Five plus two equals seven, right? Do another one. Same kind of thing, same story, just quickly reviewing. Okay, so now we're gonna have a new story and you're gonna fill in your chart to show the numbers in a story in a way that will help us count on. And what do I mean by that? Instead of back here, how we did five plus two, we're gonna do five plus, because then I hope you see that I can count five, six, seven. Do you see how I'm counting on? I'm not just using my number sentence to show how I count it all with these circles. I'm gonna set up a number sentence that really facilitates counting on from the five, if that makes sense. So the circles here are really important. That's why you're practicing drawing this, drawing a number sentence. And for this second picture, these boxes are always going to mean a digit goes in this box and circles go in this box. And kids should have this inside a sheet protector to fill in, okay? So here we go. There are four students on the swings, three students playing jump rope. How many students are on the swings are playing jump rope? Now we could say four students on the swings, three students playing jump rope. That would be four plus three. But today we're going to fill it in as four and three. So let's practice counting on. Four, five, six, seven. Do we get the same answers when we count all? Let's check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is kind of something that's gonna be hard to measure on an exit slip, right? 
you might get the same answer. You're going to get the same answer either way. It's not really about the same answer. It's about developing this efficient press and count up strategy. Great. Same thing, same thing. Great. So let's do this problem and you tell a story to go with it and you get the answer. Right? And then you do the IP. So you can see, even though this is fairly complicated in terms of like all the ideas that I want you to one day connect and that I want to be connected in kids' math brains, that eventually leads to like alternate algorithms. Truthfully, it's fairly simple, right? We model the problem and match it to an equation, and then eventually we just adjust how we represent our equation to really drive home how counting on gets us the same answer. Of course, we're always telling stories to make meaning of these numbers.